Yo, this is the Scar City Studios YouTube channel. Please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. And our sponsors are Alpha Claims and Hire Birmingham, the leading and best accident management company. Get a replacement car anywhere in one hour. I really appreciate you joining me. And before we start, I've got to pay my respects to the family of Kian Woods, Kian Mulready Woods, who was 17 years old. This story is very deep rooted and please believe it stems from a rivalry between two gangs initially but there is a lot of other layers to this story. I'm referencing the independent newspaper The Guardian, the initial police reports and I'll reference them as I go along too. The initial headlines that are filling the papers is killers filmed themselves dismembering a 17 year old boy and plan to deliver his head as a warning and the police are now hunting a psychopathic Dublin hitman that they believe is responsible. The psychopathic Dublin hitman that they describe is Robbie Lawler. He's a notorious figure in the Irish underworld and I'll speak a bit more about him in a minute. But first I'll read more from the article from The Independent. The men who killed and dismembered a 17 year old Irish teenager are believed to have filmed the sick act before posting the footage online. Video has emerged to show the final moments of Kian Mulready who is thought to have been decapitated and dismembered on Sunday night in the town of Drogheda before his body parts were dumped in two separate sites in Dublin. These separate sites were council estates and from what I'm being told from everybody in the area is these was done as a message. It is thought that his head was going to be delivered to a suspected gangland boss called Cornelius Price and it was meant to be sent as a warning but instead it was left in the boot of a burning car. Police believe the teenager was killed as a part of an escalating gang war between gang based in Drogheda and in regards to the footage I've received a lot of footage I've received the aftermath of the murder inside the property where it happened in my time doing this I've never seen a murder so publicly displayed they wanted people to see this murder they wanted people to see the aftermath they wanted people to see the beheaded child they wanted them to see everything and hence why I believe the police are so confident and they've released the details of the people they want. Officers say Kian was kidnapped and he was taken to a house in the town of Drogheda. Overnight on Sunday his body parts were dumped. Investigators are believed to be working on the theory that Kian Woods was murdered in revenge for the gangland slaying of Richie Carberry in the November of 2019. Richie was 39 years old and he was shot multiple times as he closed the gate outside his house in Betsy Town, County Meath. He had survived the previous hit in March as well. Police were investigating the possibility that Keon Woods, the victim in this case, was murdered because he had links to the Carberry killers. The Irish Independent newspaper reports, the main suspect is reported to be a 35-year-old notorious Dublin hitman and described by police officers as a serial killer. It is thought that the gang responsible for killing Carberry had also made threats against youngsters, prompting the hitman to take revenge on the teenager in, in return. So they're insinuating that they may have threatened Robbie Lawler's family, young members of his family, and that, in re and that was the retaliation. That's what the police believe currently. Now, what's your name? Lou. <laughs> and how much did we give you? About eight quid. <laughs> but that's all the change we had because look at, is she not the image of Eddie Uzel? <laughs> no, come here. Nasty. But at the end of the day, easy. look at his fucking car up. <laughs> Lou, that's like the bollocks. No, what have you got to say, Lou? Thank you, thank you. No, no, it's, 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 a ple it's a pleasure meeting you. Oh. Okay, and look after yourself. Now, what are you going to do with that place? I'm going to put this watch on. Oh, yes. Well, do that. Look at this here. Look at this one. Look after yourself, Lou. I promise you, I've got a Lou every day. Violence between the two drug gangs has been steadily escalating since 2018 when a suspected dealer was shot and paralysed in the town. This dealer that was shot and paralysed in the town is actually Kian Woods's godfather. This was followed by a series of non-fatal shootings, petrol bombs and beatings across Meath and Louth counties. Between the fatal shootings of Carberry and another man, Keith Brannigan, last year, the Kian Woods killing marks a significant escalation in the violence. It shows no sign of abating despite extra police resources allocated to tackle it. I can actually tell you now that somebody contacted me a couple of hours ago and told me that a shooting had happened a, a couple of hours 
hours ago in retaliation to this. And also on Monday at 6.20pm in Drogheda, a taxi was shot at and a taxi driver was shot accidentally from the looks of it as a well-known gang member was in the back of this taxi and the police believed that he was the target and he's part of this drug feud that is ongoing in the north of Dublin at the moment. And the police have had extra resources pulled in but they say that it's not really making a difference. They've also spoke about a video of a man in a balaclava threatening to kill the hitman Robbie Lawler that has appeared online and they believe that it is the son of another murder victim or somebody else that they believe Robbie was killed. I actually was obtained that footage as well. Robbie Lawler, I'm coming for and the house where the police believe this happened has already been taped off and it's so the footage that was sent to myself uh, could only have been recorded by people that was actually present at the time it has been declared a crime scene and blood has been found outside they said he was taken to the house attacked there and from the video that i seen he was stabbed multiple times he was tortured definitely and they videotaped and photographed the body parts before dumping them the boy's limbs were found inside a black puma bag dumped in Coolock of dublin around 10 p.m. on Monday, children found the bag. The discovery was made a short time after police received intelligence that Keon had already been murdered. They were called to report of a burning vehicle in the Drum Contra area of Dublin at 1.30 in the morning and found more body parts inside. It was thought the teenager's severed head was found inside the boot. They said it was recognisable because they had not touched the head during the murder. DNA tests subsequently confirmed that the limbs belonged to Keon as well and additional tests on the remaining of the car have yet to come back but there is little doubt that they belong to the teenager. Tests confirmed that Kian had been murdered. The Garda spokesman which is the Irish police said that Kian was a 17 year old juvenile. He disappeared on Sunday January the 12th and parts of his remains have now been discovered. This is a brutal and savage attack on a child. The level of violence is shocking and the investigation into his murder is being coordinated from the Drogheda police station. They said that Kian was wearing a Hugo Boss tracksuit, black Hugo Hugo Boss runners, a Canada Goose jacket and Gucci baseball cap. And this just goes to show the sad escalation of the violence there. The town of Drogheda in the east coast of Ireland is one of the oldest in the country. It's known for its gothic churches and ruined abbeys, but in recent years it's become more notorious and recent gang wars have cost the lives of three people. One person paralysed and seen a lot of arson attacks. The current cycle of violence in July 2018 was the attempted murder of Owen Maguire outside his house in the town. Maguire was shot at at least six times in the stomach, shoulder and both hands with one bullet lodging in his spine, leaving him paralysed. And Owen Maguire is the godfather of Kian Woods. He was a well-known associate of Cornelius Price, believed to be one of the leaders of the gang involved in the feud. The shooting sparked a series of tit-for-tat shootings. Two homes were petrol bombed and pipe bombs were found in properties as well. Another spate of attacks during 2018 saw six attacks in 24 hours and a 20-year-old was kidnapped and stabbed. Police found him with dozens of wounds to his face. And then in 2019, when Richie Carberry was killed, as I mentioned briefly, that is... Robbie Lawler's brother-in-law. Why did the police say that this guy is a, a serial killer and also a hitman and, and he's never been convicted of murder? Robbie Lawler was released from prison on the 17th of December last year and police in Ireland were scared that he was actually going to start a gang war because his brother-in-law who had been shot down dead while he was in custody and now they believed he wanted revenge. The police in Ireland put an alert in place for Robbie Lawler when he was actually released from prison and they said don't approach him unless absolutely necessary. He was in prison at that time. The attempted murder of his ex-girlfriend's mother and also killing her dog. The, poli the police believed that he would go to war with another dealer called Mr. Big, a rival drugs mob. And Lawler's brother-in-law, who was killed in Betsy Town County Meath last month, would also encourage revenge. There was also suspected of carrying out the brutal gun murders of two IRA brothers called Alan and Vinnie Ryan in 2012 and 2016, and also a separate ex extortion-related dispute. They actually sent a message out to all the police stations in Ireland that this man was actually being released. That's how dangerous they believe Robbie Lawler was. The criminal had been locked up 
since January last year and he'd been refused bail at the High Court when the chief heard of his position in the gang. In prison, he had a number of disciplinary incidents. He was in, in involved in a violent incident where he beat up a 28-year-old man who was on remand in prison for a North City murder charge. Laura was said to have a very fierce reputation in prison and he was also meant to have had a clash with the Maguires while in prison as well. Lawler and his associates had been linked to a string of unsolved murders in the capital. This includes the slaying of Mr. Big, his rival, his right-hand man, Ken Finn, 36. He died after being shot in the head in Darnsdale in February of last year. The Finn killing, along with the recent fatal shooting of Carberry, have made the two mobs mortal enemies. Mr. Big's crew is considered the biggest drug dealing organisation in the north side and has also been involved in kidnappings. Meanwhile, the current rivals were investigated for the fatal shooting of Noel Deans, 27, in January 2010 in Kula. They were also suspected of murdering David Fred Lynch, who was shot four times in the head with a 9mm semi-automatic. Ironically, a young associate of the slain Lynch emerged as a suspect for actually carrying out the shooting of Carberry. Robbie Lawler's associates have been investigated for the murder of a criminal named Mark Byrne, who was shot dead outside Mountjoy Prison in May 2005. Dublin District Crown Court in 2008, it was disclosed that Robbie Lawler was arrested as a suspect in the shooting of Anthony Aodeji in Darnsdale in July 2008. He was shot as he held a baby boy in his arms. The victim was shot five times as he sat in the car in Buttercup Park in July the 4th that year. Ultimately, Lawler was never charged in relation to that attempted murder, but he has over 135 four criminal convictions. These include possessing a stolen car, dangerous driving, public order offences, a five-year sentence for possessing drugs and the recent trial where he was cleared of all charges for shooting his ex-girlfriend's dog dead and also shooting at the house and he was found not guilty of all them charges. This kind of builds up a picture a little bit of who Robbie Lawler is and why the police are so certain as to why he done this. So it's a terrible escalation of violence in Ireland. But if anything, we need to look at the fact that this isn't being spoken about in a fraction of the way. Even in Ireland, it's not being spoken about in the put in the media in the same way that other stories would. When we have teenage kids being beheaded, I think it's time where we actually sit down and have the conversation like what are we doing to protect the kids from getting involved in these sort of situations so I want to send my condolences and I'm definitely going to follow up to this story as well and a little bit of history to do with this war might actually even be beneficial so leave a like comment share and subscribe and don't forget to join us online and follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Scar City Studios thank you peace